Meeny, miny, mo. Which one will we tempt? I do like Peter. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm a massive fan of Peter Jones. When I decided to start my business, I read his book and I loved it. I am really excited and thrilled to have the opportunity to pitch my business to him today. I'm ready to slay some dragons. I'm ready to tempt the dragons. Hi, I'm Sarah Hillary and I'm the founder and chief temptation officer of Be Tempted Gluten-Free Cakes. I'm here today to ask for an investment of £75,000 in exchange for a 5% stake in my business. A few years ago, I went gluten-free by choice and was astounded by the lack of great tasting gluten-free products on the market. So I made my own. I made a business out of it and Be Tempted was born. We've built up a really great customer base. Every week we deliver into Harrods, Whole Foods, Selfridges and Fortnum and Mason. Our product range comprises of nine flavours in a variety of formats. Since 2012, we have turned over in excess of £500,000. Our gross margin is anywhere between 51 to 73%. I'm here today because we have a potential opportunity to launch our brand into a national retailer and we anticipate that it would increase our monthly revenue by over 300%. This is an amazing opportunity and one that I hope you will find tempting. I have one of my temptation officers with me. Would you like to be tempted? Oh, abs I am tempted, absolutely. Tantalising the dragons with her range of gluten-free cakes. Pizza we know you like it hot. Oh, I do like it hot. Is sweet-talking entrepreneur Sarah Hillary. Now I realise why she keeps winking at us. Thank you very much. She's hoping to secure £75,000 for a 5% slice of her business. Yeah, it's a bit greedy, don't you think? Yes, you're right. A little bit greedy. But it's the valuation she's placed on her company that's caught the attention of Tuka Suleiman. Thank you. I can see you've tried to sweeten us all up. Um, you think that your business is now worth 1.5 million. So let's talk about those numbers. Sure. Year one, 2012, turnover, how much? 46,000. 46. Year two? 82,000. Year three? 86. Yep, year four? Um, 99. 99, yes. Um, 121. 121, one. okay. What was the gross profit, what was the net profit? I can't remember for year one. You can't remember for year I, one? For the entire... When can you... The last year? Uh, last year... Gross profit of? Uh, the gross profit in that year... Sorry, it's just gone from my head right now. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. You can't tell me. You should know that rule number one in the den, you've got to get your figures right. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to shock you. That's all right. Um, your products look fantastic. They taste brilliant. I thought you were really going to come in with some pretty hefty numbers and growth, but you haven't. What is your forecast for this year? £367,000. And what has changed? How are you going to achieve the 120 to 360 leap? So this potential opportunity that we, that we have with the national retailer is for... Who? Who with? Tesco's. And they said they're going to order... Three products into a minimum of 150 express stores. So what revenue would that give you? Um, £180,000. Your business over four years hasn't really grown at all. Yes. And you're forecasting this year no real growth apart from one account. So what's going on there? The first four years relatively flat. Um, variety of reasons. I guess that I didn't have enough money or investment behind me to invest in new products or any marketing to grow the business. Okay, that's one reason. Another reason, at the time, I wasn't really interested in growing the business. 
Why were you not looking to grow the business? Uh, okay, well, to be honest, because I'm Australian, yeah. I wasn't quite sure how my visa situation would work out. So you spent four years not growing your business because you're Australian? I don't understand. I don't want to give you a hard time, but I kind of do now. Okay. I, it doesn't answer my question. Right. You just said that it's because you weren't fully committed because you thought you were go might be going back to Australia. Yes. Is that what you... Well, why don't you repeat that to Peter? Because that's what you... Oh, sorry. But now I have indefinite leave to remain, so I can stay in the UK. Ah. Uh, OK. That took a bit of uh, extracting. A frustrating exchange for the dragons, as Peter Jones has to work hard to get to the bottom of Be Tempted slow growth. But with Sarah's dedication to the business finally established, Tej Lalvani is letting his taste buds do the talking. I must say, this is delicious. Thank you. It is absolutely amazing, the, the chocolate brownie. Um, uh, what's the next step that you plan to do? I would like to get into another retailer. Uh, I'd also like to target the cafe market. And we had an inquiry about potentially supplying Rail Gourmet UK. So, you're going to be the first one selling gluten-free in Tesco? In terms of the luxury, high-end, artisan, produced, we would be the first. The, the competitor that I would compare, well, who I'd compare it to, would be the Tesco Finest Brownies, and that retails at £2.50. £2.50, and yours will be how much? £2.49, and there's no preservatives. Handmade. Yeah. Well, I, I like that the product is good. Um, what exactly do you want from a dragon? I would like some contacts. It would be great to, um, to be introduced to some of the people that you know, and I think it would be a lot of fun. Sarah, you mentioned brownies, and automatically I realise I have a conflict. I know. Bad brownie. Yes. So, um, for that reason, I really have to say I'm out. I understand. Can I ask what you think of our brownies, though? Sorry? But can I ask what no, you think of our brownies? No, that one's over. Sarah. Okay, sorry, hi. Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Have you heard of the sniff test? No. It, it's not about your cakes, because they actually taste lovely. It's the nicest gluten-free product I've tasted. The sniff test is what an investor does when they look at a business and decide whether or not they're going to invest. And something doesn't smell right here. At all, to me. At all. You came in and gave a very confident pitch. You sent Miss Temptation to wink at us saucily to eat your cakes. But you don't know your numbers. Talk to me about how you get to your one and a half million valuation. OK, sure. So, because everything is... everything is moving at the moment, uh, I well, that's had... not a reason for it to be one and a half. Who's told you that it's worth one and a half million? I had somebody who was a finance director in a restaurant chain look over the numbers. But do you believe it's a one and a half million valuation? Or are you just really happy that they're giving you a big number? I, you know, I honestly, I do think it is based on uh, forward, Today or forward sales and forward value and with a, a terminal value for exit. Of? Uh, well, if you look at Goo, sold between 20 to 25 million pounds, same as Green and Blacks. I'm fascinated, you can't look at something like Goo they broke a market, massive amount of marketing behind it, and it was a different type of product. Yours is lovely, but it's, it's gluten-free brownies with a nice brand. Your valuation's crazy. I'm afraid I'm out. Sarah, I... I think the size of the opportunity and what you've done over the last four years has demonstrated really where the business is at. It's all very neat and it all looks great, but it's just two cottage industries, very small. Tesco Express, I don't believe it will work for you at 249. I think you'll find it will be 149 very quickly and margin pressures will come on as volumes potentially increase. I also think the valuation is, is not just crazy, it's absolutely ridiculous, stupid, mad. So for all those reasons, I'm not going to be able to invest and say that I'm out. OK, thank you very much. Sarah, 
your business strategy and the evaluation are half-baked. And that shows a naivety on understanding how that works in business. You know, I can't see the help I could give you on such a ridiculous valuation and a small percentage. So I have to say, I'm often tempted, but on this occasion, I'm not persuaded. I'm out. Look, I like the product. It's great, it tastes good, and you've been able to penetrate quite a few retailers. And I think you're, you're doing okay. But with the Dragon on board, you could, you could do even better. I think the risk is very high for what you're asking for the business. I'll make you an offer, but you're not going to like it. Okay. It's got to be all of the money, but I want 40% of the business. Tej Lalvani's offer of £75,000 for 40% of the company demands eight times more equity than Sarah put on the table, slashing the value of her company by over a million pounds. Would there be any potential to buy back any of your percentage if we hit our revenue target for years one and two? The first year revenue was going to be how much? 367. And then 900,000 pounds with a 166,000 net profit. If you hit years one and two target, I'll drop it down by 10%. So from 40 to 30. Would that be possible to do it to 20? Sorry. It's a sweet, sweet deal. I'm tempted, would be tempted. But uh, not that tempted. As long as year one, year two are hit, down to 30%. And can I ask how you see this going uh, with your contacts? Like who potentially. Right, so basically, I can look at introducing you to um, Asda, Sainsbury's, <clears throat> Waitrose and uh, open those doors for you. Okay. Okay. Um, can I go to the wall? Yes. Thanks. A tough decision for the entrepreneur. Tej Lalvani's revised bid, reducing his stake from 40 to 30% on a buyback deal, still leaves Sarah giving up six times more equity than she wanted. I was hoping it was going to be a bit more competitive and, than this um, because I think it's a great opportunity. I do see the value of having a dragon on board. And so for that reason, Tej, I'd like to accept your offer. Great. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Well done. Well done. Good luck, Sarah. Finally, after a tense negotiation, Sarah exits the den with an investment. Well, I think you got quite a good deal there, even though it was a little bit greedy. It wasn't greedy. It wasn't I greedy. just love the brownies. I did come here today to get a dragon on board, and that's exactly what's happened. I'm really excited. <laughs> I am really excited. <laughs>